All right, in the last section, we saw that matrix algebra wasn't as well behaved as regular real number algebra. Um, in, this, in this section, we'll actually look at what goes well. So here our goal is to learn how to manipulate matrix operation abstractly without using specific entries. So I'm going to start with three matrices. So let A, B, and C be matrices. And I'm going to take D and E to be real numbers. So always capital letters for matrices, um, small letters for real numbers. The following properties hold as long as the size of the matrix ensure that the operations are defined. So whenever they're defined, the two sides of these equalities are the same. So first of all, matrix addition is commutative. So if I have A plus B, that's the same as B plus A. And then a lot of things are associative. Matrix addition is, so A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C. In fact, because of this, we can write something like this without putting parentheses and everybody would come out to the same answer, whether you add A and B first or B and C first. All right, matrix multiplication is also multiplicative, not commutative, but multiplicative. So. Um, you can multiply B and C first, then A, or A and B first, then C. You'll get the same thing. And because of this, we can write A, B, C like this. That's well defined. I don't need to put parentheses. And also, uh, multiplication with scalars, that's associative. So whether we have two scalars like you have here or two matrices like you have here, um, whether you multiply E and A first or D and E first, whether you multiply A and B first or D and A or D and B, all of these things would actually give you the same answer. All right, you can distribute matrix over addition. So in this case here, I can send the A in I'll get AB plus AC. A must stay on the left. Same thing here, I can send C in, but now C's on the right, so it must stay on the right. So here C's on the right, it stays on the right. I can distribute scalars over matrices, so I can multiply that D in and I can multiply that A in. Then the zero matrix has tons of nice properties. Um, if I add it to any matrix, I get that matrix back. If I multiply it by a matrix, I get a zero matrix out of it. It might be a different size zero matrix. It depends on the size of A. If I multiply any matrix by zero, I get the zero matrix. And then we have properties for the identity matrix. Whether I multiply I by A on the left or on the right, I get A back. And if I multiply a matrix by one, well, I get that matrix back. I want to expand A plus B squared and simplify. Remember, when we write a square, what we mean is you multiply that matrix uh, by itself. All right, so first thing I would do here is I would use the distributivity to start expanding. So I'm going to take this entire thing, entire matrix, and multiply it in. Um, that means that the A plus B will stay on the left. And then you can multiply the a and the B in. So I'll get AA plus BA plus AB plus BB. I'm asked to simplify, so I'm going to write A squared instead of AA. And um, there's nothing I could do with the BA and the AB. We're used to foiling and having two AB, but in this case, BA and AB are different matrices often. And so I cannot put them together. So there's nothing on that part I can simplify, but then I would write B squared instead of BB. And note that this isn't the same as A squared plus 2AB plus B squared for most matrices A and B.
All right, let's try the following example. I'm asked to factor these expressions. All right, this is a bit of a mess. My eyes are trying to focus on it. Um, I want to pull out matrices. And if you remember, let's look back at this distributivity. Um, if I, we've been going on this direction, but now I want to go that way. I will be able to factor A if it's on the left for both, then it factors, or if it's on the right for all the terms. So if I look back here, I have A and A. So I will be able to bring A out on the left. Let me write C squared as CC. It's going to help me in the next step. All right, can I factor anything else? Uh, on the left, I have B and C. They're different. I can't factor them. On the right, I have C and C. Perfect. I can factor C. So I've taken the C out on the left. I've taken the A out on the, sorry, C out on the right, A out on the left. I can't factor B, I can't factor C because they're not on the same side of both terms. So here I cannot factor B or C because it is on opposite sides. All right, let's try the next example. I have AB plus 3A. Um, this one's a bit strange. I want to factor A out. Factor A out is hard because A is on the left, on the right, but it's not on the right of a matrix. So I feel like I could pull the A out because the number can move around like we saw. And so I want to write this. But this doesn't make any sense right here. I can't add a matrix plus a real number. That makes no sense. And so here's a trick. But this is not right. Here's the trick that you need to remember or you need to um, just know. I'm going to replace A by a times i. I'm going to replace a by a times i. I know those are equal. And now when I pull a out, I'll have an i left. So I'm not going to have um, just the 3 hanging around. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to use this property here of, where is it? This property let me do it in green since everything is yellow. This property here that tells me that I can move a real number, little a, around. So in this case, my little uh, real number is 3. So I'm going to write it as ab plus a times 3i. And now at this point, my a is on the left of both terms. And so I'm going to take a plus um, the 8 comes out, so I get 3i, and that's the matrix fa factor that I will get. So that's how I would factor it. All right, so let's recap. If you have a product to expand, matrices that start on the left are kept on the left and matrices that start on the right are kept on the right. So you're not allowed to pass them through each other. So for example, if I have all these matrices on the left, then when I multiply them, I'll get all possible products But the left will always be, the L's will always be on the left. 
and the R will always be on the right. So all of these were left, they stay left. All of these were right, they stay right. Okay. Then when you factor, if a matrix is on the left of all the terms in an expression, it can be factored on the left. If a matrix is on the right of all the terms in an expression, then it could be factored on the right. So if I have LA1 plus LAK, I'm going to be able to factor L. It's going to be on the left like this. Same thing if I have something on the right. I'm going to be able to factor it on the right again. And if I have something on either side, then I cannot factor. I would need to know that A commutes with B or A commutes with C so I could switch the order of one of the two. 